Hello, welcome to another episode. This time I'm going to be using the EXA camera. This camera is done by IHAGE in Dresden, Germany, and it's a nice camera. Uh, I, I had my eye on this camera for a long time and I finally saw one online and decided to purchase it. I was so excited. I remember I purchased this camera when I was living in Berlin, uh, but the copy I found in Berlin was not really working properly, so I was halfway through the roll, maybe on image number 12, and it started failing on me, and it happened two times, so I had to return it. Um, so when I found that there was one for sale and I could actually purchase it and give it a try, I was so excited. So the first part of the video will be my impressions on the camera, how it works, how it handles, what is it good for, and then the second part of the video will actually be the shoot film episode. So uh, if you wanna see just the episode, you can jump to this time, and if you wanna, uh, see the full review you can just keep watching look how shiny it is it's such a nice camera man uh, i was really excited when i found this copy because these are not really easy to find cameras i mean they're not ultra rare but they're not as readily available as you'd want as you can see this camera has a waist level viewfinder that you open by moving this button over here and it folds open the image is projected down there and you can focus it as a waist level finder. Good and bad things. The good thing is that I really love waist level finders. They feel unintrusive. You're just taking pictures like this uh, and they look cool. The bad thing is that the screen for the waist level is not really good. I mean, it's not a terrible screen. It's a... It's an okay screen, it's bright if you shoot wide open, but it has a few downsides. The first and foremost, most obvious one, is that if you wanna really take a picture with critical focus, you need a magnifier. And to open the magnifier, you just do this. You see this lever on the side, you just grab it and move it like so, and now you have your magnifier. And if you wanna uh, put it back, it doesn't work like this, you have to do the reverse movement. So you have to grab it and put it like this. Uh, it feels flimsy, it doesn't feel like a strong part, so it, I, I always get nervous when I move it, even though it's obviously not gonna break, but just the movement of doing it is not really comfortable. It has a sports viewfinder, which I, I never use. You can use like this, but I never really use it like this. I just, um, yeah, I just use the waist level finder. I think that's the, that's the, that's the reason why I got this camera. A not so good thing about the waist level finder that this camera has is that if you shoot wide open, in this case I'm using a 50mm 3.5. If I shoot at 3.5, the image is bright and clear and it's amazing. But if I want to shoot at f16 or f22, the image goes almost completely dark. So the way I found to take pictures with this camera is to compose at 3.5 and then when I have the composition that I want, then I close the lens to f22 or whatever I really need and then I take a picture. To take a picture, you lift this very fancy button over here and you take a picture and then you can close it to move to the next frame you just wind it like so it will lift the mirror up and you'll be able to take the next picture like nothing happened so you can be actually pretty quick this obviously means that the finger that's taking the picture is your left index which is not really super uncomfortable but it's not common uh, if you're like me, you're used to take pictures with your right index finger. This is not impossible to get used to, but it's not the most comfortable thing in the world. I would have preferred if this shutter button would have been over here, so that would be much easier. Um, but then that's just the design. Shutter speeds. That's the one thing I really wanted to talk about with this camera. To change the shutter speed, you just move this lever where you want it to go, and that will be the desired shutter speed. They go from 150, 100, 50, <laughs> 25 M bulb. That's all you have. 150 is your fastest shutter speed. That poses a problem and is the reason why on this episode I'm not taking pictures on the street. It's, it's too slow for street photography. Focusing is not really fast. You have to get used to the um, waist level viewfinder, which I am super used to. It's not a problem but you have to compose at 3.5 and then you have to close the lens and then you have to take the picture. It's, there's a lot of movement involved and if the fastest shutter speed you're gonna get is 150, if your subject is moving or running or in any kind of dynamic situation, you're probably gonna miss the focus or it's gonna appear a little blurry and not really 
uh, sharp, as many of you really like sharpness, but this, uh, this certainly is an issue. The rest of the camera is pretty common and easy to maneuver. You just move this latch over here and it opens the back door. You can remove this. You grab the spool and you put the lid of your film in here and then you just put it there and pass it here, put the canister in there, close it and you're ready to go. Since it has a mirror, uh, right after you take an image, the image will go blank, like you will not be able to see through the viewfinder, which is pretty similar to a Hasselblad. In a Hasselblad, it's the same thing. You take a picture and then everything goes dark and you have to crank um, the camera and just move the shutter and cock it in order for you to see the next frame. So the mirror will lock up back in place and you'll be able to see. Um, so if you're using uh, Hasselblad, this will feel right on your alley. It's basically the same thing with a much slower shutter speed. And that's it. Nothing really difficult about this camera. It's a fun camera. It's a camera that it's good for just relaxed photography. If you're going to take landscapes, I guess, will be a good option. But most than anything, it's really good for flash photography because it has an X sync right here. So what I wanted to do on this episode is take some pictures with flash, which is something I have never done on the channel and I wanted to give it a try. Of course, something bad happened. <laughs> of course, whenever I try something new on the channel, something bad happens, but I'm not going to give up. This is going to be just the first time, but certainly won't be the last. Uh, that I'll take some pictures with flash. Oh, well, also you can, um, in case you were wondering, you can remove the uh, waste lever viewfinder and then you can put it back in place because you're clumsy. Huh? Huh? <laughs> so what I wanted to do was taking some pictures with flash uh, using this camera, because if I'm going to take pictures using this camera, I, I didn't feel like going out on the street and try to make it work. I just rather ask somebody and then take some pictures. So I was lucky enough to get in contact with Shoyu and she has a Instagram account and a YouTube channel. It's called Victoria and Me and you can follow her. She has amazing images and videos about what she does with uh, Lolita dresses and whatnot. It's really cool. So I want to take some pictures with Flash and the Exa and that's what we did. We just met in Manhattan and took some pictures and I wanted to give it a try to the Flash. Now sadly um, the vision I had was not fulfilled because I wanted to use the flashes and use more ambient light but I ended up using uh, too little ambient light and the flash was a bit too strong for the ambient light so um, well in reality I used too little light that was the issue because uh, I was I was not measuring the light with a light meter I was measuring the light with the camera and I always forget that when you take pictures with the digital camera and then you transfer into film they're not equal uh, the digital camera captures more light uh, or at least if you take a measurement on the digital camera, at least on the OSM, it's going to be at least one and a half stops more of light than in film. So I did not take that into account and I messed up, but images were done. So at least we have something. Not everything is lost, my people. Yeah, that was my experience with the EXA. I hope you enjoyed the episode and then I'm going to talk about it at the end.
And that was it. And that was the EXA and that was the whole session. Did I have fun with the camera? Yes, I did have fun. It's, it's not a camera that you would take if you want to have like fast action things. It's a camera to be super relaxed and to just grab the camera, be completely uh, cool with it and take some pictures and just stroll around, take pictures of, you know, the street or buildings or like things that are not in movement. Or if you want to, you can make a photo session like I did. I'm not gonna give up. I'm gonna make an art photo session for sure with flashes because I had tremendous fun and I wanna use the uh, photo. Uh, I got, I, as you can see, I got a softbox. So I wanna use the softbox and I wanna use the umbrellas. I used to use flashes a lot. I love that. I love flash photography, but I stopped doing it since I moved because it made no sense to buy everything again. But now that I'm gonna stay here in New York uh, for a long time, at least six years, I hope uh, it made sense to buy those things again and give it a try. So I'm super happy about that and I wanna keep experimenting and shooting more with flash. So be sure this is not the last time I'm gonna try this experiment. Hopefully next time will be a better result. But this EXA camera is really fun. Uh, it was great shooting it. It was everything I was hoping for, a relaxed camera, waist level finder, Great thing, I had fun with it. And it will go to one of my patrons. So thank you so much for your support, patrons, especially in these times where I'm like super busy and swamped with things for university. You guys are the best and you keep supporting me and you send me so much like good vibes and everything. Man, you are just the freaking best. So if you wanna be part of the raffle and Patreon in which I give away cameras every single month, uh, be part of it and join. I'm gonna leave the link in the description and yeah, if you want to support me by purchasing a scene, I'm going to also leave the link in the description. description. So, uh, so yeah, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this episode and I will see you next time, probably the subsequent week. As you can tell, I'm uploading episodes uh, every other week. The reason is I am super, super swamped with university. I have to read so much. It's just being crazy so i thought i would be able to pull up one video a week but so far it's not being doable so uh i'm doing my best if i can pre like produce one video every week i'll certainly upload it but if not just at least be sure that there will be a video every other week so that's all i can promise you for now i'm gonna leave and i'm gonna say goodbye and that's pretty much it i hope you enjoyed this episode and as always just keep shooting guys